Okay, hello and welcome to another episode of my new podcast, Hiring and Inspiring, a show where I talk all things sales, recruitment, business, leadership, and well, kind of anything else in between. Now, today's guest is, uh, well, a very special guest, one of my oldest friends um, that, well, that I still you know keep in touch with. Uh, top bloke, a guy called Ollie Pullen. We go back a long way. I think we became, well, we were friends initially when we were about sort of 10, 11-ish years old. We stayed in touch over the years. Um, Ollie, you know, has, uh, well, he now works full-time, you know, professionally as a, an architect. Um, he works for an architectural firm uh, in, in our hometown, Guildford in the UK. Uh, doing really well from what I understand. He's um, super passionate about what he does. He's very into it and um, I'm really enjoy- well, really excited sorry, to, to have a chat to him and, and, and find out you know, a little bit more. So with that intro, Ollie, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Morning. Hello. Well, good evening to you, but morning over here. <laughs> good to be here. Man, I'm really excited you. to have you on. Really excited to have you on. Um, l- l- like I said, so uh, you, I interest you. You work full time as an architect. Now, this yeah. this might be um, this might be a, a bit of a silly question, but mm. as a, a as an architect, uh, like typical day, what what does that look like? Um, typical day is you're balancing at the moment. So I've I've been qualified for two and a half years, I think now, um, just over two years, October yeah. 2020. Um, so typical day for me is generally. It can really vary, and that's the most exciting part of the job. Is that you yeah. one one day you could be going on site visits, looking at construction, um, one of these projects. Um, another day you could be working on designing something up to like planning, like to get planning permission. Um, and then other days you could be looking into um, so like contractor would do work, and they would like. Um, send you evaluation for that work and then you're like looking at loads of numbers so like excel spreadsheets and um okay doing more like contract management and things like that um so the days can vary um and then you're juggling between different projects as well so it's not like it's a profession where you come into the uh come into the office and you don't really know what's going to happen because emails will come yeah, at right. you and say can you can you do this for me now um and then you've got to jump on that and it's um it's quite exciting keeps you on your toes for sure yeah yeah like like you said it doesn't sound like there is actually a typical day every no, day is there different isn't. you're working no in. no so you at the um in my company at the beginning of every week we're issued like a program of what um everyone's working on and generally yep. you try and stick to that as best you can but then things come up in the week and um like you might be called to go to a meeting for example or there's like an immediate thing that we need to address so like if something's on being built on site for example uh you will get an email from a contractor or a phone call saying like this detail doesn't work or like how are we going to do this and then you need to kind of drop everything and um see that yeah yeah and the the different aspects of the job what do you uh, you know, are there some areas you prefer more than others? Um, yeah, I think the way I've been doing it for the last couple of years has been um, the construction side. So actually, at the moment, yeah. like it's really weird because I like, obviously I went to uni when I was eighteen, and now twenty nine, yeah. and I'm only just seeing things that I've worked on being properly built. Um, so it takes a long process okay. from that start to finishing point. So now I'm actually seeing things that I've designed getting finished, um, which right. is really cool. So like I've been for the last couple of years, as like my experience has grown, um, I've been pushed down into more of the well, I've gone down the route into more like of the managing projects. So like I'm quite enjoying that at the moment, like working with contractors and like speaking with clients um see and getting like a project over the line rather than before i would be just like taking the back seat and doing the drawing work now i'm more of like a a front-facing role which i quite enjoy that's cool yeah Yeah. that's cool what what about like some of the projects you work on i don't think i know this like what what type of actual like projects do you you know what's like a typical project that you guys work on um so like our company 
quite lucky. We cover like a range of different sectors. Um, so we do like yep. school projects. We do like houses. So one I've worked on at the moment has been a house extension. Um, and we've only recently just got that signed off, which is great. Um, that was like my first real project. Um, which was a really nice house extension, actually. Um, really lovely client. Yeah. So managed to get that over the line. And then other ones I'm working on have been, um, well, you know, like I play football with like Alex and that. And then, um, mm. when we train on a, on a Wednesday at King's College, um, which means yeah. to your listeners, but, um, where we train is, <laughs> uh, there's a building right next door, um, which yeah. was like an old, um, school block that was built in the 1970s and like um put up really quickly a prefab thing um and that we converted that into a gym so whilst like okay. the construct whilst we were football training um i was like i had like a building like right next door so um that was one of our projects as well which is more of an, uh, a school mm. project so the school are using that now and um i think they've opened it up now to the public as well which is really cool yeah yeah but there was cool. a time where um when that project was being built the uh path like into the football pitch where everybody was trained had to be moved so they had to walk like two minutes out of their way um yeah. which was obviously my fault because <laughs> it's my <laughs> well it's not my fault but you know yeah i got a bit yeah. sick um yeah so it's like it's a range of different things like yeah education residential um and then there's obviously some other things that have been worked yeah. on, but um, just haven't got over the line yet, unfortunately. And what's the progression like in like a career in architecture? Because you mentioned at the start when you first started, you very much were sort of taking a back seat, doing you know working on the designs, but you know in in the background. Now, as you've progressed a little bit, a few years down the line, you're taking the, the lead on some of these projects. What, where, where can you keep going to? Is there like a continued sort of progression plan in, in the career? Uh, yeah, sure. So like at the moment, I would say I work under a director. So the director yep. has got vastly more experience than I am. Um, and they will kind of advise me and like um, give me kind of, not the answers, but they'll tell me like, this would be a good approach to do and be wary of this, be wary of this. And like, I learn from that and I learn a lot from that. So the projects I've worked on at the yeah. moment is like, you know, taking from the directors and like, what can I learn in the future? So the, yeah. the future would be basically overseeing a project on my own. Um, right. And that would be the next step is to try and take a project, oversee it on like myself. And then I guess after that, it would be bringing someone through, um, like in the position that I'm in now and being that kind of advisory, advisory. Role. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a bit more, you know, management responsibilities, you know, yes, a bit more of a mentor it, yeah. yourself. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Management yeah. responsibility. Yeah. Which is what I've been doing a little bit. Um, well, what I'm starting to do with the social media side. So one thing okay, yeah. done the last couple of years has been, uh, the social media for the company and we've been, We've been a company for 36 years now. So we've got all yep. of that um, experience and all of that like project history that never really saw the light of day. Um, and for example, House of Fraser in Guildford, we did that, um, which is quite a notable project. Um, so one thing I've been doing is trying, like I've been, I enjoy doing social media. And one thing I've been doing is starting to delegate that out to more of the junior members um mm. to say like right i need a social media post on this um can you prepare it um give me a draft and then kind of preparing like the posting schedule and, and um making sure that like our social media is yeah top. yeah nice so but next question is um you know uh, we, we i think i said this to you actually when i was back in the uk over christmas like when mm. You know, when we were growing up as as kids, and you know, everyone at school was kind of always talking about what they wanted to be when they grow up, and blah blah blah. You know, everyone said they wanted to be a footballer or a fireman or whatever. You know, you always like want to be an architect, mm. and you know, and it's it's amazing that I, I, you know I said this year. I think it's amazing. You know, you've now you've gone and done that, and you've you kind of live in live in your childhood dream, which I really? you know really really admire, well, um, because it is kind of rare. 
the, the, my, my question is, you know, now you're doing it, <laughs> mm. is it kind of, is it everything you dreamed of? <laughs> it's very different to what I dreamed of. Um, okay. It's in, in, in an interesting way. So like I always yeah. thought when you're an architect, I always grew up thinking, oh, you've got to be really good at maths and really good at science and like that. But you, you don't really, um, you, it's, um, for example, I didn't know that it, you would have to cast your eye over like valuations um, and all of the contract stuff. So, for example, architecture is in three parts when you're studying. So the third part is um, you do at uni and it's a year part time, but you're basically yeah. given a load of different scenarios um, when you're like, just like scenarios as if you're an architect and how you deal with them. So it's like, somebody wants to sue you because you got this thing wrong how do you deal with it yeah. it's like a little law degree so you've got to what i didn't uh, realize okay. is i thought when i was growing up you've got to be a really good designer um have some construction knowledge but what i also didn't know is that you've got to be good at kind of financial management you've got to be good at mm. you need to know a little bit of law as well like common law um so it's um it's a lot more involved than I thought, but that's a good thing because, like I said earlier, it's yeah, on your toes definitely. Yeah. Um, you, you touched on something there. You know, your study. You know, you. I, I know. I mean, people, someone may know. You know, it's just to 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 study as an architect. You know, you have to go through extensive. You know, I think you did you did a three year degree and then you worked some internships and then you went back, um, did a couple more years of study. So. I don't know, you know, from us catching up over the years, that was a real journey for you. Um, that was a real, there was lots of ups and downs on that on that path, and um, it was a real, uh, you know, it, it was a massive part of your life for for a long time. How do you look back on that that journey that that journey to become an architect? Mainly, you know, all the study you did. It's um, it's a long journey. So if people don't know. Um, the UK system, which is there, um, actually, they might change it. Um, they're in consultation at the moment, so maybe narrow it down a little bit, which um, I fully support. But at, the way I did it was um, three years at uni, so I went to Plymouth for three yeah. years. Then I worked part time. Um, no, then I worked full time for a year. Uh, then I went to Kingston for two years and did my part two, um, and then I worked yeah. for another. I think it was three years um, before going on to do my part three, which was part time um, at Kingston again. So you go in one day a month and have a lecture and, and then you write essays in between that, have exams. So all in all, it took me nine years. Um, yeah. So it, during that time, I guess you know that because you're doing it for nine years, it's it's frustrating at times because you see people that, went to uni, did their degree in three years, got it done, and then they're, they're finished, they're set up, um, they're earning money. Um, other yeah. people that never went to uni are earning money, getting on with their lives, and then you're sat here just like, oh, yeah, okay, I've got another year of uni to go or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah. So you've got, the, you've got to persevere. Um, and I think I said to you, when I last saw it, it's like my 20s definitely took a back seat in a way. It felt like for all of my yeah. 20s, I've been learning, like working towards getting to this point or getting to something. Yeah. And hopefully my 30s is the, hopefully the decade where I start reaping the benefits of that. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, it's a long journey. And the people I've met through that journey, like other people that did architecture and gone on to be architects, I'm very close friends with. And, you know, we experience things that other people probably, probably wouldn't do. Mm. So um, mm. yeah, you form good bonds through that. This is quite a, it's quite a big question, but like, is mm. you, you know all the all the study and all the you know uh, you know I remember you telling me about the the all nighters you did and you know all that kind of mm. stuff. Is it you know it, was it worth it? I think so because because I don't I can't see myself doing anything else. Like you you yeah. know like growing up. Everyone would be playing football or like, you know, playing PlayStation and I was making yeah. stadium models, like, you know, <laughs> which is fine because everyone's got their quirks, right? So like, 
But, um, yeah, 100%, yeah. It's like, come on, Ollie, why am I be making a model at, like, 15? Like, honestly. But, um, yeah. but I think I think so, because I wouldn't of I wouldn't put picture myself doing anything else. And I always yeah. remember going to... I never thought I could do it. I didn't think... When we were doing A-levels, I didn't think we I would be clever enough to do it. So when we went to... Do you remember when we went to Sandown Park um, for that uni? Yep, 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 yep. Sandown Park is a race course in Surrey, and they did like an open day thing for uni. But yep, I remember, yeah. Plymouth Uni had a stand, um, and I went over just to see what their prospectus was and for... Um, for architecture and I had because I didn't know what I was going to do but I didn't think I would be able to do architecture um and then I saw that you needed these qualify these like a level results and I thought right well that's doable I'll just that's it mm. settled never considered anything else um so then I just worked hard to make sure that that happened um yeah so now yeah and answer to your question well, it was worth it yeah yeah great mate. what what about you know when you said earlier like when you saw people who just sort of did did a you know three year degree and then they graduate and then they're in the world of work you know earning good money and off their way when you were sort of oh, you know I've still got a couple more years till I I'm at that point and I've still got a load of my work what yeah. what sort of was your what kept you going like what what kept you, you your what was your sort of why to like you know to keep pulling the all nighters to keep pushing through when because that must have been pretty challenging as you said or like you know demotivating when you saw other people just kind of almost effortlessly effortlessly sorry just mm. you walking in their careers and you must have felt you know they're almost yeah. ahead of you what kept yeah. you going well it's like it's that and then it's also the social side of things so it's not like okay. studying isn't like a full-time job where you do monday to friday nine till five and then you're done i mean you can do that and if you do that more yeah, power yeah. to you but um also you're working flat out on all the weekends and it is like a seven day slog really yeah um so like things like when all of your close friends are starting a sunday league football team um and you know you can't do that you've got to delay joining that team for a year because you've got to get your stuff done um yeah what kept me going was fear of failure basically yeah okay um so it's like I, I just knew that I've got to get it done. It will all be worth it one day. Um, yeah. And having people, close friends. Um, so when I was in Kingston, um, I met about five people that are really like are good friends to me now, and we kept in touch. Um, and we all kind of pulled each other through. We're all in the same boat, and having that support. Right. Yeah. 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 It's like it's part of the bigger process. Yeah. I guess that inner circle you you had those friends, mm. they're important because they got it. They know they you know you all you you both knew or you all knew what you were going through. You know you could catch up with me say, but I didn't get it. You know I didn't. Yeah. I, I wasn't living it like you were. So. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I completely understand that. Well, what about, um, you know, like I know, you know, you talk about earlier how you were making models as a kid and it was always your hobby and it was, you know, what you were super passionate about. I'm always interested when I speak to people who end up sort of working in, you know, what their, their hobby is or what they're really passionate about as a, as a profession. Mm. Has that impacted like your kind of love on, you know, I don't know what the word is, you know, sort of your your passion for, you know, what you do like do you still enjoy it outside of work do you still i don't know take take pleasure in looking at a building i don't know quite how to pick uh sort no, of say it but do you know what, do you know what, do you know what i'm trying to say yeah i do know what you're trying to say it's interesting because like people that like i speak to they'll, they'll, they'll always say oh you need to visit this city because the architect is brilliant but like yeah with architecture there's different styles obviously so you've got your like more historic architecture um then you've got your dubai's which is your ultra modern um, yeah like style 
and everything in between that. So I think you find your what you're interested in, and then you get excited about about that um, oh, okay. in terms of like different styles of building. So for me, like you throw a stadium in front of me, I would be really interested <laughs> in seeing that. And I still am. It's still my love. Well, I love them. Um, yeah. And if you, you throw like if I see a stadium, I'm really interested in. It. I'm interested in the history of it. Um, but then if I was to go and see like a an old like stately home for example i'd probably be less interested in it um right okay and that's just but everybody's different um when it comes yeah. to comes to but but home. working in the industry hasn't it doesn't sound like it's sort of throwing you off because you hear uh, people no, know, definitely like not. chefs who work in food suddenly mm. hate cooking or you know mu- musicians yeah who play professionally never i don't know like it seems like it hasn't for you though no it hasn't for me and if anything you'd like because I'm on that learning curve at the moment, um, like I notice things a little bit more. So one thing okay. I've been doing last year was like snagging, and that's like where you go through like a completed building and you pick up all of the tiny little details that you can't really sign off yet that you need like a contractor to go okay. in and pick up and just like amend quickly. So you're looking at like the details of the building more. Um, which like maybe two or three years ago I wasn't. I was looking at the whole building as a as a object. Um yeah, whereas cool. now I'm like delving deeper into different like the detail of it and like noticing yeah, things cool. and appreciating that. Yeah, cool. Nice. Um mate, so ne- next question, I'm gonna switch this up completely here. Um right. so going go, going back in time now, so as I said at the start of this start of this chat, you know, Ollie's a very old friend of mine. We go go a long way back. The bulk of our friendship, me and you, so that you know, the time we spent most together was probably between the ages of, you know, eleven to eighteen. Mm. So kind of, you know, almost you know, a, a a boy to becoming a young man, right? That that period of your life. Yeah. Um that's also when we were we were super close and hanging out all the time. Um because it's something I sometimes think about. How how do you look back at that that period of you know our life and 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 your life? Happily, I think. Yeah. Like, I wish I appreciated it a bit more. Hmm. Time, but like you know, playing. Obviously, like we played football together. We used to go down the cricket mm. nets and play for hours, um, where I wasn't yeah. really much of a challenge for you. But there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like golf, like what an amazing time we had. Like, yeah, me and yeah. Alex from Glenning, like playing golf like all summer, and like looking back on it, I look back on it really fondly. Um, and to have that friendship group as well that we had, and that like. To know mm. that when you came over last year for us to all go out and like watch that Champions League final together, um, yeah, that's like, great, wasn't it? years later, like to have that still is like it's quite special, I think. Um, to yeah. all still be in touch with everyone, and yeah, and I look back on it, yeah, quite fondly. How about you, yeah. Do you... yeah, yeah, m- m- more, you know, much of the same, really. I I, I look back on it because it's sort of that that period is when we we, we grew up together. Like we you know we became mm. like I said just now we, when we first were friends we were boys, and then by the time you know at the end of school we kind of we obviously yeah. slightly went our own different ways a little bit, but we were eighteen and, and young men. Yeah. That like growing up together, like we just went through stuff together yeah, like yeah, that you yeah. just don't go through that you say with a colleague that you're know, a friend that you make now and in, in your sort of late 20s mm-hmm. you know just that you know bonding over you know just talking about a girl you liked or just you know the, the stupid stuff that we used to do and you know first mm-hmm. time like you know, getting alcohol to get like just things yeah. like that growing up together like those you don't realize at the time but like those things we just went through in that period with with the friends and, and that we had like it's it's just the foundation of the friendship and i i imagine everyone is the same the friendship yeah. you've got at that time at that period of your life is like you know you can you can go on and do different things in your life and you can go on to do different 
things and but you've always you can always come back to that and that's why you've just got that foundation of the friendship which is set in, in stone but yeah, yeah. I, I look back at it as yeah just we had you know like pretty fondly we were quite lucky to live in a you know a nice part of the world and you know a privileged sort of upbringing so yeah i uh yeah yeah i i look back on it and yeah with, with a lot of good memories mm-hmm. um switching it up again i want to ask you about so we've, we've gone the we've gone the present we've done the past what you know we're talking about the future now yeah. i know you've got a um you've got a big year ahead uh you've got an exciting year ahead you're getting um getting married uh, later yeah. on this year yeah. um I've got to ask you how's how's the sort of the, the preparation going for that and your general sort of feelings about that that big day. I'm excited for it. Um, yeah, there's we're we're getting to a point now where there's starting to be a few things that need to be done, so it's like ramping up slowly, and that's fine. Yeah, um, we've got a date sorted. Uh, we've got the venue sorted. We've got the church sorted which is brilliant and that's half the battle I think um so yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to it preparation's going well um as well as can be expected mm. um I've appointed the team um so like yeah. the best man the groomsmen etc um and it's yeah it's going well it's going well um I think at the moment yeah I guess maybe closer to the time it might you know it's I don't know yeah, I think I'm at Things, point where it I'm gets like, closer. Yeah, I think I'm at the point at the moment where I'm not too like worried about it. I'm more looking forward to it. But then there's like the more I speak to people, it's like, oh, have you considered like flowers, photographers, and things <laughs> like that? It's like I, I haven't, yeah. but you know, that's <laughs> and I'm gonna have to do it, and like I'm gonna have to approach yeah. it like like something I do with like work or something I mm. treat it with like the utmost respect and just make sure that it's you know, it's all done and properly and ready to go on the day. Yeah. Amazing, mate. So you mentioned earlier about, um, you know, again, talking about the future here. So you were saying how you're really looking forward to the next sort of period of your life. We turn, I hate to remind you, we turned 30 this year. Okay. Um, you mentioned about how you spent your sort of twenties really grafting away to now be in a position where you can make hay a little bit and, and make the most of it. Mm. How how do you feel two questions here. How do you feel about, you know, turning thirty and the you know, the years ahead and, and what are you sort of predicting not easy to answer this, but what are you predicting for your your thirties in the, oh, in the, the next um, the next decade, say? Yeah. I never asked you the same question in a <laughs> It is really weird because, like, I was watching The Apprentice last night and they said, we want to target the age 30 to 40 bracket. And then you think to yourself, oh, my God, in six months' time, I'm going to be in that age bracket. What on earth? <laughs> um, but uh, do I look back? I look back on my 20s as more of, like, I, um, I fulfilled everything I wanted to do. So, like, yeah, I... You know, become an architect. I've like done all the studying for it. I've obviously got got this flat, and um, you know, met Larissa. Really happy with like everything yeah. that I've achieved in the last ten years. Um, and obviously got engaged. So that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So then I look back on it as like I'm like with like I'm satisfied. I don't know if that's the Mm. way to say it um whereas other people i guess would have the mindset of oh, i enjoyed my 20s like you know i went out and did loads of different experiences but like obviously i explained because of my study and i wasn't able to do that as yeah. much um so going forward in my 30s i guess you know i'd like to have a kid um yeah sooner or later um and i'd like to just progress with work, like learn as much as I can and become a yeah. good architect. Um, and whatever yeah. growth comes of that in terms of professional um, like career, then that's great. But I think the yeah. the main ambition is to become a good architect and everything yeah. that comes with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's funny I was talking to I was talking to our friend Tom earlier and he mm. was saying, you know, 
I asked him a similar question, to be honest. And um, he, yeah, he, similar kind of thing. Like he meant, and I think, you know, he really wants to kick on with his career. Um, you know, as he, he's now, he is obviously 30 already. So he, I was asking him, how do you feel about turning 30? And he's like, yeah, now's my time to really kick on. And, you know, now he's found what he hopefully wants to do career wise. I feel like a lot of people that through your thirties, that's that is what you it, it's it's for. It's where you really put your foot on the gas and, and kick yeah. off. Um mate, um no all, all very all very good, all very exciting. Um one one maybe one final question from from me. Um this is a question that I've asked a few people on this show uh, and I'm interested because it's people can take it in different ways. Um it's around topic of success. Yep. So, like I said, you can take this. You can take this question whichever way you like. But mm. what does success mean to you in 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 your life? Success to Ollie Pullen. What does it mean? So, success. It's. Um, I think it's about being, like I said earlier, about being satisfied. It's about. Yeah. It's about lying in bed at night thinking, have you tried your best? Whether or not it's worked out well or not, have you tried your best? And if you have, then yeah, okay. you have to sleep well at night. If you haven't, then that's going to keep you up. Um, that's what success is for me. And everything that comes up is going to be. Usually, if you try your best and you go into it with the best intentions and like and everything, then things will work out. I'm a firm believer of that. If you do everything you can, then things will work out in your favour. And I guess that's what success is to me, is that you've got to be, like, you've got to persevere, you've got to keep going, but you've got to always try your best. And as long as you try your best, then I think it will all work out in the end. Yeah. Generally. In a professional sense, personal sense? or just I think everything. Really... I think everything. Like, yeah. Um, like professionally, if something goes wrong at work, like you just got to remind yourself, mm. um, did you try, did you try everything you could? This yep. thing that went wrong, was it in your control? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. If it's not, then, or if like, did mm. you know about it at the time because you're still learning? And if not, then, you know, you'll just say to yourself, learn from it and grow. And as long as you do, then that's that's all you can do in that situation. Um, and then, like, personally, um, I think, like, there's two things to it, I, I guess. Like, if, if personal part, if personal life, like, are you making the time for the people that you, that you love? Um, if not, then how can you address that? And also, I guess, like, going back to the whole thing of me wanting to be an architect since the age of seven um it is like really embrace what you love doing so like yeah you know when i'm making models as a kid i look back on that now maybe there was a time when i was quite ashamed of it and i wouldn't like show people the models and the drawings and everything but now i look back on it and think actually that's good because that got me to where i'm at and that was like a stepping stone in the right direction um yeah so I would say that if anybody has got something that they like doing, if it's a craft thing, if it's drawing, if it's like selling a product or anything, just like embrace it and enjoy it and take ownership yeah. of it. Um, and six, that's what it is. Like if you, if you can find happiness in that and if you can try your best, then I guess you will be successful. And if you're mm. just satisfied with, mm. with everything and I don't know if that makes sense. That was a lot of waffle. Yeah. It it does, man. It does. I love it. I think what I like about it is, um, it's not. It, there's no like comparison to other people about it. Like you, you're, it's more like you know, it's not successful. Am I better than that person? Am I doing whatever? It's, mm. it's when you say as you lie lying in bed at night, like, have I given it everything I've got? Yeah. <laughs> not yeah. no one else. Like, yeah. ha have I given it everything I've got? It doesn't matter really how I'm doing it. Uh, anyone else? Mm. As long as I, as long as I have, as long as I can say yes to that question, mm. um, then, like you say, you you can you can be satisfied and and, yeah, and you and can that's, take that's, that as success. That's kind of like a new thing that I've tried to adopt in my mindset. Is is that so? Like, 
I was really bad at comparing myself to others, especially when you're studying at uni and you're all doing the same project on the same site and then you do a piece of work that you think is really good and like it's taking you hours and then you pin it up on the wall. And then someone else comes along and puts their work up next to you and it's like mind blowing and like you know, it's worth it. And shot you can let that ruin your round and like still on that like holes and holes and holes just like how i used to do a bad shot and throw all of my clubs out the bag <laughs> or <laughs> or you could just say okay that was a bad one i'll suck it up and we'll yeah we'll tee off on the next hole and we'll go from there um, yeah and try and cover it back um, and i think that's what that's what you've got to try and do is just try and Stay calm, stay in control. Yeah. I think, yeah, like, I, well, I remember a particularly uh, bad debacle on the ninth one time. That's <laughs> what I was referring to. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, like, the, yeah, but I mean, the thing about that that meltdown, if you don't mind me calling it a meltdown, like, that was, was like, no, no, you know, it was your own game that you were not, you know, it was like, that's the, and that's the thing about golf, isn't it? Like, it's, your actual opponent can't really physically affect what you do. No, <laughs> you know it's not like they can come in and, in football like they can put in a great tackle and ah, you know it's it's all it's all on you and mm. yeah, just going back full circle here, like I don't know your your best um, like your best opponent is yourself. Yeah, always yeah. trying. That's what I always try and do, mm-hmm. and I've tried and learn to do. Still, yeah. still struggle with it, but just try and compete against yourself. Try and be better mm. than you were yesterday, mm. and you're on to a winner. Um, are you still playing any golf, by the way? No, not for a while. No, <laughs> um, it's been ever since I moved. I haven't because obviously golf is a bit further away. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is something that I want to get back into, but I'm enjoying playing yeah. football at the moment. We've got a really good team, a good bunch of guys, so I think. Hopefully, yeah. when I'm done with that, I'll go back into golf. So, yeah, yeah, maybe got a few more years in those legs. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, make the most yeah. of it. Yeah, mate. Um, gotta gotta say, really, really enjoyed that chat. Um, yeah, no, thanks it, thank a, a bunch for coming on um, and sharing your journey, sharing your wisdom. I, you know, learned learn a few little things about you I didn't know, so I always appreciate that. And um, Mate, doing doing some great things. So keep up the good work, and too. yeah, too. great to chat. And um, appreciate on, the. Uh... You know, I see you on LinkedIn. I see you on TikTok, and you're, you're doing moves. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know, probably well. And this podcast been made, as but... well, like good to good on you for like starting a podcast, man. Like, appreciate yeah. it, mate. Yeah, we well, you know, yeah, well, like, maybe a uh, repeat guest down the line. But um, yeah. Ollie Pullen, great to chat. Thanks, yeah, mate. Thank you. Cheers. Have a nice day.